guys, welcome to day, I think we're on 22. I'm going to be wrapping things up here. I think this is the very last video until I get the stuff back from the painter. Today is Tuesday. He promised everything by Friday, so um, I, I've got videos in the meantime. So I don't think there's going to be a break in what you guys see, but there's going to be, I think, a three-day break for me where I just can't do anything else. But I think I can go ahead and get this rear together, get the lighting on, get the seat pan on, get the seat on. I don't think I need the tank, kind of like the instructions show, because I can just take two mounting screws off if I need to rearrange something after the tank is on. And the side panels are gone after I get the lighting wrapped up, because that's just basically hiding a lot of wiring and stuff like that. And the fenders are going to bolt on lickety split, that's just a little bit of alignment. You're talking like a dozen bolts, there's nothing there. I do have to put the mirrors on, obviously I can do that today. That all won't get tightened down until the tank's on, but that's really no work. Other than that, I've got the plate uh, to go on. I do have the plate already, I've got the tail light ready, I've got the plate holder, that just bolts on. So, I think that's the game plan for today. Get everything except the fenders and tank on and we should be ready to go with one last assembly video, a shakedown ride. The first thing I'm going to do actually when I get everything ready, get everything assembled and can start it again, so I have the tank and fuel in it, is just a, a normal heat cycle because I need to burp the coolant system. I'm actually going to check the coolant here to see if anything settled. Whoa, that's loose. Hey now. Another mounting bolt supposed to be there. It's weird. There's a there's two mounting holes for the cap, but only one bolt. No, I guess that's the way it's supposed to be. But I, I do want to top this off, and after it heats up and the thermostat is allowed to open, obviously get it completely topped off, and then check the reservoir here, and then button up that side panel, which is just I think two bolts, so no big deal there either. So anyway, what I'm going to do right now is some cleanup work because I do have a bunch of garbage around here, lots of packing material, I can throw all that out. Um, there should be some tools here that I'm completely done with, I can start putting things away back into the tool room. That's a nice turning point. Got some old parts left over that I can chuck and we'll go from there. I, it's going to be tight. The wife comes home Thursday night or so. So, I don't know if I'm going to make it before she reclaims her side of the garage. <laughs> It'll be close. Let's get started. Well, these mirrors should be really simple. We've got two brackets. One has a little space around it, and that goes on the left side, because this has a built-in stanchion here. Now, they, they have little uh, written instructions. Let's say to add more of these little star washers if the threads are too long. So we're going to put this in and see if it is. It's a 17 mil bolt. This should just hang over here somewhere. Oh, that breeze feels nice. Super muggy out, rained earlier this morning, thunderstorms around us, never really cooled off. The wind finally started here. Oh, it's blowing in. I gotta open the side door. It's gonna really cool the garage down here. Almost there. Quite a snug bolt. And yep. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna need at least one more washer. A little bit of a gap there. We'll try two for good measure because I don't feel like taking it off again. Have to say, the uh, they should just shorten this bolt by a quarter inch. <laughs> That's all you have to do. 
I mean, I would imagine they're reusing these parts in multiple kits, and that's probably why it's not, you know, the best it can be. Like these extension bolts down here. I'll bet you they're using those bolts in other bikes where they fit better, and they just end up too long on here. But, I have to say, for the price of it, I want a bolt that fits, all right? Blue collar bobbers should definitely be supplying the best fit parts for each kit. And I'd like to see the correct bolt in here so I don't have to stack washers. But at least this one isn't real noticeable. Like those two bolts sticking out are. Alright, that should do that. Run this back in. Now the other side, I'm assuming, is going to be the same. They had little written instructions with these and that was pretty much the only warning. It just said to install the braces before the mirrors. And I'm going to leave these again a little loose. There we go. So I've just got clearance now above the brake reservoir. I'm going to leave these a little loose so I can finalize the mirror setup when I actually get the bike assembled and can sit on it. The mirror itself looks like it's just an interference fit. There are no screws or anything. So you've just got a pass-through hole and it just sits on there, I guess. Oh, no, there's a set screw in the back. I was like, man, there, there has to be something. All right, now I should have a little Allen wrench around here. Yep. Just get this adjusted somewhat. Snug this guy up. Again, not super tight, just don't want it to fall off. And then we'll fix that as soon as we get the bike done done. So I'm going to stick a couple washers on here. This one has a little shoulder extension, so they match the height above the bars. Well, that one went in a lot easier. Must have been a little extra powder coat or plating on that other bolt. Now, I can tighten it down a little bit, just so it doesn't want to wiggle. And put the other mirror on. Where did I put that little wrench? There it is. Losing my mind. And snug this up just so it doesn't fall off. There we go. All right. Man, that looks cool. That looks so much better. I think you can see all that. That looks so much better than the stock mirrors. I mean, even on a stock bike, I would put these on. Check that out. I love the love the lines of the rectangular mirrors. Kind of looks like my glasses. Love it. Okay, let's uh, move on to, I guess I'll do the seat pan here. First thing I'm going to do here is lock down my battery, and before I do that, I want to put on my pigtail. So carefully undo this. Again, watch out for the little square keepers in the battery. When you pull a screw out, if you're going to be removing the battery, put the screw in immediately before you bump it or anything. Sometimes those can fall down depending on the vehicle and really get lost, trust me. I'm going to do one at a time here. And when you put on these connectors, anytime you have a spade connector or a ring connector, you're always going to have one end of it that has the wire and one end that's pretty flat. So oftentimes, whatever you're putting it on, it's more advantageous to put it one way than the other. Just going to squish it in here. I guess I'll put the wires out towards the back. 
I may end up having to switch them around because like I said, I'm not going to know exactly where I want this pigtail to come out until I get everything buttoned up. Now here also, it can be a little tricky to sometimes re-engage those little keepers because I've just added height. And if the bolt is not quite long enough now to catch the first thread on that keeper, guess what? You can't screw it back in. <laughs> you have to somehow lift it up a little bit and then turn the screw to catch it. I think that might be where I'm at right now because it's just sitting there spinning. Trying to see. Sometimes you can push it real hard and turn it and catch that first thread. That's all you need to do. Nope. <laughs> uh. All right, let me try this. Let me try, just in case this cable is hanging up a little bit, I'm gonna put it on top of the bike harness. I like to put it underneath just for a more solid connection because this bike harness goes over everything, wraps real well, but it's not really critical. So uh, let's just try to keep it squished down as far as possible. That's the key. I'm really not adding that much depth with this little tiny ring terminal, so it should catch. It's probably just the angle everything was squished at. Did I get it? I got it. All right. So that's the that's the key here. I'll just angle it kind of towards the middle, and then I'm going to go ahead and torque these down. Very light, you know, eight ten foot pounds at the most. No, not even that. Uh, six to eight. I mean, just real good and tight. Hand tight is fine with a wrench, but. These little aluminum blocks strip pretty easily. That goes for any battery, any power sports battery that is. So this guy I'll just put carefully angling this way. Get in there, come on. And re-engage the keeper. going to be difficult to. All right. Where'd my wrench go? And there we go. Battery buttoned up, pigtail on. Now, I need to check out their instructions for the seat pan and the seat springs and the seat itself and then we'll get this area covered. Okay, got the seat pan assembled here. This was just putting in a bunch of screws basically. Screw holding each of the springs down and this nose block here which this goes underneath the gas tank so it's not going to be able to be sat on until I get the tank back but I can get it in place basically make sure you guys can see it here this is the tank is going to come here this is the mounting slot or the mounting screw hole for the tank so the tank ends somewhere right about here this just hooks up underneath it so we've got these two screws in the back and they are going to hold down this whole seat bracket so basically after i attach the seat itself to these screws here and there's a pivot joint here in the front this mounted with the seat becomes an assembly and this whole assembly comes off just with these two screws so it's just as easy to take the whole seat off as the stock the stock just had the one bolt in the back center now we've just got two one on each side and this whole thing pops off so you can get your battery and your fuses and your relay computer and all that kind of stuff if you ever need to i mean pretty much Changing the battery out is the only time you need to take the seat off in this particular bike. So I'm going to go ahead and take these screws off here. This one came off with my hand, and this one I need a wrench for. Oh, oh I got it. <laughs> I'm strong like bull. Like bullshit. Should. Uh, I've got this pigtail hitting, so we'll just kind of readjust him later on should line up here Let's 
sitting on something. Uh, okay, it's hitting this plastic slot tray thing here. This may be a difference. I'm gonna have to look at their instructions again. Another year difference kind of thing. Because they've got a cutout for this one, but there's no cutout for this one. Let's see how it hits that one there. Yeah, it looks like this one's in the way too. So shouldn't be any big deal if this is just a year difference thing to cut these off. You know, they're not needed for anything. This was a channel for this stock wiring to fit through. We're not gonna use it, who cares? So let me uh, verify with that and I might just have to buzz this off. No big deal, hold on. There we go, that's the way it's supposed to fit directly on there. So note, if anyone's doing the later model ones, I just took my tin snips and cut them off real quick. You're never gonna see them, who cares? You could use a Dremel. Just didn't feel like taking that whole thing off and making a mess and getting the plastic everywhere. And not worth it right now. But if I had a known, I would have buzzed that with a Dremel when I made the cut over here. Now, I'm gonna put these on loose because like I said, I still have to make adjustments to this when the tank comes and I have to get in here to do the back wiring anyway, but just want to see what it looks like and get the seat mounted. No, I think I have to wait for the seat. So I might as well just leave that alone because <laughs> I can't tighten the seat down until I get this stuff tightened down and that's waiting on the tank. Okay, just reasoning it out here. So I guess next I will hit the back lighting, the tail light and the license plate holder and we'll get that buttoned up. Well, I guess I might as well show you uh, what the seat's going to look like sitting on here. I want to see it too. This will show you the actual height that it's going to be at. So we've got this bolt here. This is a pivot bolt that goes through here and then the springs each just bolt down to the side. So. There you go. So we got nice clearance under here, plenty of spring action. That's gonna look awesome. Just a quick note, I'm going through the instructions on mounting the lights and I see that in their video, they've got those stanchions cut off the same way I did. So I must have somehow missed the instructions on, on trimming those. So not their fault, my fault. First thing I have to do here for prep, move the camera a little closer for you, is drill some holes for zip ties. Now all I have to do is make sure it's behind this metal brace that's running in the last inch and a quarter or so of this. So it looks like I got about first inch of this. Drill through here. here. These are just going to hold the wires underneath because I'm going to connect everything on this left side here. There we go. That will do just fine. Get off this plastic bits. Now I'm going to go ahead and start, I think, by mounting the tail light. Let's go ahead and mount up the tail light now. There is a left and a right side to it because you have the light underneath for shining on the license plate. And the whole thing and the bracket, which is right here here for the license plate itself is all held on by these two screws in the back of the light assembly so this goes on top that plate looks looks like it'll be a nice fit there and then these two will hold everything in so let's go ahead and take these out there's some lock washers should be nice and long screws Yep. Alright. 
We've got a regular washer that's going to go in first, then a lock washer, which will go on the outside. And I can't forget this ground wire that's on the inside screw. And I would imagine he needs to be placed right up against the washer on the light itself. Since I don't want it going through any of the powder coating on the brackets, probably not a good thing. So we'll stick him in there. It's going to be a little challenge to get everything aligned. Another one of those cases where an extra set of hands would come in handy. <laughs> Okay, let's see. So this has to go in here. So I might as well feed the bolt in through the back first, eh? The lock washer on. I'll do this inside one first so I can take care of that ground wire. Then the bracket. Then the light. Hmm, all right, now how do I have to wire these? wires. Let me verify with the instructions here. Not quite sure where to route that ground wire. I think the whole thing has to come out the center bundle, but maybe it goes around like that. I don't know. Let me check. Nope, I was wrong. They want the ground connection all the way on the outside, so I guess they're counting on the bolt transferring everything. That's fine. It obviously works. So we'll stick him in there. And then the other two wires do come through that center slot. I gotta ah the stupid bracket. <laughs> Thank you. Kid complimenting me on the motorcycle. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see here. You know what? I'm just gonna put this washer on last because I cannot hold three parts at once. There we go. This goes in there, this goes in here. This has to swing around first. <laughs> I love in the in the instructions, everything's already done. <laughs> I just say, okay, do this and this and this. Boom. Parts are already out. Parts are already assembled. <laughs> they don't actually show you. You might want to do this and this and this and this. That's alright though. Nothing about this is hard. Okay, so. Get that in there. Hold this without it falling. Now I need the regular washer. Once I get one in, it's going to be just fine because it will be held up there. Okay, find the hole. Stay there, grab the screwdriver. Just get it started, that's all I ask. Ah, there we go. Very nice. I'll do the other one. Which shouldn't be a big deal. Just gotta loosen it up a little bit to get that washer in. Bolt and lock washer through the bracket a little bit. Get the washer on there. Push it through. Start it. Yay! Awesome sauce. So now, tighten these up. Now they've got really nice designs here in their parts. They have holes just for zip ties so that everything looks spick and span. They've got a big hole through the bracket here so all these wires can feed through and you won't see any of them on the outside of the bike except for this three inch span right here. But it's all heat shrinked so it just looks nice and black and uniform. and professional. Very OEM looking. I'm all about the OEM look, you know. I, I like customization. I like installing things and I like farkles and all that kind of good stuff. But 
I like it to look stock. I don't like anything to be sticking out. That's just me. I know a bunch of people don't care. But I do. Snug this bolt up real good. Snug this one up real good. Get those lock washers in place. Okay. Bada bing, bada boom. That is in there. That looks good. Plate's ready for the plate, or plate holder is ready for the plate. This, I just need to zip tie. One here, one here, one here. This will all be hidden. And then I just need to figure out where they want it all routed. Probably right in there. Not sure. Double check that. Now we need to get our bullet lights installed. And I need to snip off this stock connector. And we'll be connecting. Wow, I just realized that the pigtail they had me use is like two feet more than I need. <laughs> so I might end up snipping that. And we'll make all our connections and just hide them in here. And the side cover will be right here to cover everything. Let's do these lights. One thing I'm doing before I get any further is taking off this obnoxious stock sticker down in here. Got about half of it off. I'm using a combination of Goo Gone. Kind of helps soften it up and it gets anything remaining once I get the actual sticker off. But it's not doing too much. And I've got a combination here. I'm using my thumbnail, which is good for starting it. It's kind of like a multi-layer sticker. Over top is a sheet of plastic. You kind of have to peel that, kind of like the membrane on some ribs. And then I've got these soft plastic uh, spatulas. They're for, you know, painting, puttying, that kind of stuff. So they're flexible, can't damage the paint. And this one is tougher than this one. It's real good for getting off the larger edges, but working around that curve, I'm having to use this one. And you'll find out that one edge is sharper than the other. They're kind of on like a little bevel. So it works okay. It's coming very, very slowly. I'm about 20 minutes into it here and uh, just plugging away. So we'll get this off because it, it really does stick out now that you can see it. The stock fender used to hide it. So definitely wanted to get rid of that. <clears throat> Time to put on our lights. Start with the left here. Just need to undo the bolt. And let's see, this is going to go in. I need to trim these zip ties here. I've got the rest of that sticker. The last half just will not come off, so I've got a big paper towel saturated with goo gone, piece of plastic on top of that, and then that's all zip tied down. I'll give that a good half hour to soak in and hopefully that will take the rest of it off. So this should be a very easy install. Just want to arrange my ground wire to be out of the way. Get this guy started here by hand. And I'll have to step back and make sure I've got it level before I lock it down. Alright, so that's in place. Let me find what wrench I need first. Let's see, is it a 14? It is. Wow, they didn't mix metric and SAE this time. <laughs> they did for the seat bracket when I put that together. I used half inch and Allen. Let's see, is that level? Almost. Not that. That looks level. Alright, let's hold that right there. Tighten this up. There we go. Not too tight, kind of going into a fragile housing there, but I can't remember if I snugged these up or not. I don't think I did, but they're in there fairly tight. I'll have to go through everything once or twice before I'm done. 
And I notice these are angled in just a little bit. It looks like these brackets kind of bent in. I mean, they're the right they're the right bend for the seat pan, so that's what's important. But I would like these to point actually straight back. They're just slightly. If they had beams coming out of them, they'd meet about five feet behind the bike. That's about how much they're bent. I would like them straight. But I don't want to bend this or anything. Number one, it would affect the powder coat. Number two, the seat bracket wouldn't line up. So it is what it is. I'm going to go ahead and do the right side now. Tell you, the more I put on, the more happy I'm getting. <laughs> it's just looking really good. All right, I'm going to step back and make sure that they're even with each other before I tighten it down. Let's look from the back here. You guys can see too. Check that out. So you can see how they're angled. They're pointing right at the camera right here. A little up on the right one, I think. That looks bang on. Let's tighten this guy down. Sure it didn't move. Awesome. Bada bing bada boom. Fish all these wires through. Again, going to that left access panel. And these are gonna be zip tied. This is what we drilled these holes on top of this plastic for. So everything will be tucked up underneath. And this is why this right one has twice as long of a heat shrink as the other one. Make sure these are all pulled up all the way. Put that one down. There we go. Plenty of room to come over here. Bada bing, bada boom. Sneak through down to there. Cool. All right. Let's see what's next. I just discovered a missing part. I'm missing one of these donut bushings, and it must have been missing before I got the bike because this didn't, it can't fall out. I had to pry the other one out to see the size. And this is what these covers, one of them pops into, the other one pops in down here. I was just going to snap them back into place. But this one here, is a little loose so it rattles around definitely want to take care of that anyway these go in these holes here so I'm gonna take this down to Home Depot and hopefully they have one or something that I can engineer to fill that hole and get those on but I want to get down there before they close and whew, kinda hungry anyway so I'm gonna break for dinner all right, well, that took a lot of doing. The soaking didn't really do much good for the label, so I just had to keep scratching it off, scratching it off, clean it with Google on, scratch it off. One tiny little sliver at a time, but that looks heck of a lot better. So I got the wiring run, zip tied end. Now all the wires here are coming out the side. Now I kind of understand why they kept the huge long loop of the sock wire, because what we have to do is connect everything. I could have done it cleaner. I mean, this is kind of the easy way to do it, and there's no problem with doing that. But you could have just wired up all the lights to the shortest run. Here's where the stock wires come out, and you know, you could have just wired everything up to that. But what they did is they're going to have the stock wires come from here, come underneath, connect here. So you do need some more. 
So anyway, a whole bunch of jumble of wires here. Got about, I don't know, a couple dozen connections to make yet because I got to snip that off. Both ends of the stock one and then all the wires for the lights have to get connected. And then it's just tucking them up, you know, anywhere in here. Zip tying them nice and tight. And we'll put on the side covers and then I'll call it for today. And I think that's going to wrap up everything I can do until the tanks. Hopefully it'll fall in line. I still have a two or three videos to put up yet. So you guys will probably see it like boom, bang, boom. Whereas I'm here waiting for the rest of the week. <laughs> All right, let me get to this. Woo, this was a lot of work, but it's fun. I compromised. I did end up shortening everything, but I trimmed everything to at least the same length coming off the accessories. I still got the long pigtail, but these are all the same length, so I'll be able to connect everything as one, and then I'll just have this little loop here to tie up rather than all of that extra foot, you know, and it was just half the wires. So this way, a lot cleaner. What I'm gonna do is I do have enough shrink wrap and bullet pinch connectors for all remaining wires, but before I shrink wrap everything, I'm gonna connect everything up and then test the lights. I, and it should be a, a no-brainer. I've got the three browns for the ground. I've got the three grays for the running lights. Um, and then a black and a white, a white, black, and then a green. And that's for the two turn signals and tail light, or stop light, I should say. So shouldn't be anything uh, mind-blowingly difficult to complete. But you never know. I might have a wire cross somewhere because I do have like freaking... 40 connections now between all the lights on the bike. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap all this up. Give me another 20 minutes or so, and then we'll test it, and then I can shrink wrap it, and then we'll put on our sides and be done for now. Oh, the pigtail actually worked out pretty well. I took the stock harness, which ran in this channel here, clipped off the connector, ran it under. It zip tied along with the right tail light to the bottom of here, and I did wrap it all in tape. It, it still had the shrink wrap to keep it bunched, but I wanted it completely sealed because, you know, even though I'll have a fender ending here, there's still going to be some dirt and water getting up in under here. So now it's, it's all up there and you can't see it and it's sealed. So I've got the heat shrink on the connector. So I got the bullet, the heat shrink on the connectors, bundled heat shrink, and then tape over everything. So <laughs> that should be fully protected. All right, let's button these connectors up and give it a test. Woo! I think I got the wiring all done. Let's give it a test. Now this time when I test the signals, they should flash at normal speed since I've got all four on. Got everything connected. Make sure everything's not touching. <laughs> okay, that looks good. If everything's right, I'll Take the heat gun to everything, seal it all up. Let's give it a shot here. No fuse blowing, that's what we want. Should see running lights. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Cool. We have light for the license plate. That looks great. Very, very nice. You can see these a lot from the side too because these lenses on these bullet connectors stick out about a half an inch like backwards so i see this glowing disc from the sides and actually all the way from here i can still see red on both of the bullet lights so that's good for visibility let me stand way back here oh yeah that's awesome I'm probably waking my neighbor up with the HID light into his bedroom. Sorry about that, bud. Let me turn that for you. <laughs> Didn't mean to do that. Okay, now let's try the turn signals. Left. Uh, I wired that right. And they're blinking normally. Right. Blinking normally. Uh, do I have four-way flashers? Is that what this is? No, oh, that's the starter. <laughs> Where is my... I don't even know if I have a hazard. To tell you the truth, I never looked. I don't know if all bikes have them. I don't think so. 
flash the past non existent. You can see the uh, high beam works. Still have to aim the light though. Huh, I guess. Oh, wait, maybe this is it? There it goes. Big old dedicated switch. I was looking for like a, a little tiny button. Blinking, blinking, not blinking, blinking, blinking. All right, we are good to go. That is awesome. Cool beans. All right, let me double check. Is there anything left? That I, oh, the side panels. Okay, I'll put those on. Anything other than that, can I button up? I'm looking on the ground here, my parts... I see the tank badges, I see the side cover one, side cover two, rear fender braces, front fender braces. That's all I have left. Bag of spare bulbs over there. Seat. All right, so I'm going to stick these side panels on and then I am literally stuck until I get the metal back. Boom, look at that. You don't see any wires. Haha, -ha, except the pigtail. Look at that. Nice side panel in place. It swoops in, follows the curve of the body. Everything tucked up, zip tied in place, sealed, weather tight, good to go. Easy to get to if I ever need to, but I doubt I ever will. This side, I just popped out the grommets that the stock big old plastic cover it came out to here you know fit into and they give you these big nylon nuts and bolts to go in its place of course you won't see any of the top part here that'll all be covered by the tank and the seat seat pan covers up there and tank covers from here on forward love it okay let me just double check make sure there's nothing else I can do Front's buttoned up. Can't wait to wash it, get rid of the blue walls, because I really want to see it pop with the whites. I'm not quite done with, you know, still stray amounts of grease here and there and dirt. And I still need to polish up all the metal with the uh, steel wool. But I want to do that in the driveway, you know, when I'm doing the actual final wash. Do all that at once. Oh, I do. I do need to pop this off because I can't remember if I torqued down the three mounting bolts. I remember I left them loose and I can't remember if I actually went back and tightened them. I need to check. I got the, I know I torqued the bracket, but I don't, I really can't remember if I tightened those down. So I'll do that tonight. New handles. I got to wait until everything's cinched down. That's all assembled loose. Did the filters. I need to wait on the oil change until it's on the ground. So that needs to be done on the side stand. Unlike most bikes, they want you to do this kind of oil service tilted, not level. So they specifically want you to do it on the side stand. All right, well, I guess I really am done for the night and done until painting. It'd be really nice. Tomorrow's Wednesday. It'd be really nice if he calls me tomorrow and says, hey, they're done. Come pick them up, dude. And they're done right, and I can pick them up and good to go. I would be off and running by Thursday at that point, and then the wife can have the garage back, and I'll be riding for the weekend. <laughs> but I have a feeling it's going to be Friday afternoon, <laughs> and uh, I'll be into Sunday before I'm riding, but we'll see. Anyway, that's it for today, guys. Let's see, question of the day. You know, I, I keep forgetting to come up with questions of the day. Let me think for a second here. Okay, this one's concerning storage. Now, I know a lot of people like to keep their bikes in the garage, but I know a lot of people commute and they park their bikes outside. You know, I was that way. I commuted to work for a few years on my bike, my FJR, my last one, and I parked outside. So it sat in the sun, sat in the rain, whatever. So it's pretty much just like being kept outside during the day, you know, if you're storing. But I know that the elements take a beating your bike takes a beating from the elements. So the question is, if you're buying a bike, how important is it that the bike has been stored inside versus outside? I can tell this one, 
at least for part of its life, was stored outside. And I can tell that from all the weird ass corrosion in places where it shouldn't be. And for example, the one of the wheel bearings, you know, that's that's from rain, man. That's just from rain. All the corrosion in the headlight assembly, that's from rain. So, you know, things like that, they take a toll and it depends on the bike, how bad it is. But, you know, if you store your bike outside, you probably don't care if you buy one that's been stored outside. So give me, give me your thoughts on it, you know? Do you care? Does it matter to you at all? Do you have to store yours outside? Do you just not have space? Are you like me and you value your bike more than the car? <laughs> the car got re relegated to the driveway, you know, when I got this here. So that's just me. That's just my priority. I've got it under the tree and it's in the shade half the day, but eh, it's a Kia Soul. Who freaking cares? I mean, <laughs> it's nothing special. Now my Mini, my Mini I would have had in the garage. When I had my last FJR, I always kept them both in the garage and I, I juggled the vehicles back and forth when I wanted to take stuff. Part of the time I kept the FJR forward and I actually pulled it partially into my tool room. And then later on, I came up with a system to park it sideways behind the Mini. Believe me, it was a pain in the ass, but no way either one of those vehicles would ever be parked outside. So, yeah, that's me. What about you? Thanks for watching, guys. Give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out the site, twowheelobsession.com. We'll see you next time. Hopefully, with painted parts and color, and it's going to be finished.